Hey everybody, got another mod here for you. This is the Sonar Acoustic. This video is actually going to be kind of a three-in-one video. It's going to be a, a build video or mod video, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, there's a good question for you. When is it a build and when is it a mod? If you change the neck and or body, that would make it a build. Anything less is a mod. Think about it. Leave a comment. Anyway, okay, going on. So here's the idea. Is that... So you got build and mod videos, or whatever you want to call them. You also got reviews of guitars. And then you've also got how-to videos. So... As you can see... I bought a guitar or two, so I was thinking, now, you see, I haven't, not all of these are covered as, like, builds or mods, because uh, uh, probably about a quarter of these, are, or more than a quarter, maybe a dozen or more of these guitars are pretty much stock, you know, and so I was thinking that, you know, I'm picking up these guitars pretty cheap. I mean, it's like, I've got like 40 guitars here, ranging in price from like $45 all the way up to like $600. And I'm only averaging, right now I'm averaging, oh, maybe $180 a guitar on average. And there's, there's some, you know, I've got a lot of guitars here that, that are good deals. And I thought I'd pass along that information in the form of reviews. So I'm going to start trying to do that, maybe. And then, this is, like I said, this is another build video. Plus, I'm going to do a how-to on this. But I'm not actually going to, like, show it, because it's so simple. And the cool thing is that it's ultra cheap. I just jumped on eBay, and you can get the parts for $10 free shipping so can't beat that with a stick all right so this is going to be a combination of a mod video this is going to be a review of the sonar acoustic and this is also going to be a how-to of how to electrify your acoustic guitar so let's start out with the review part so this is the Sonar Acoustic. Let's see if we can see it there. It is Sonar. Got the little label and everything. And Sonar up here. Yeah, I'm in my own shadow. Somebody said that in one of the comments. What can I say? Oh, I should do better. I once won a prize in a photography contest. But yeah, okay, so here's the deal. I bought it because it was 65 bucks and it was pretty. And yeah, it is pretty. You know, if you're looking for a nice, pretty guitar, this thing's a beautiful burgundy, black hardware up top. Oh, mods, let's see. I put a set of uh, steel bridge pins in it, or chrome or whatever you want to call it. And then I did the electrification, and I did uh, black strap locks, and a matching burgundy strap, and other than that, I haven't really done anything. Okay, so starting at the top, thing comes stock with, you know, baseline tuners, a uh, decent matching color for what you got going on. Um, I probably put new strings on this. Ernie Ball, Extra Slinkies, 8s, that's what I've been running for, I don't know, 30 years now, probably. So, um, yeah, nut, hut, nut slot height was fine. I mean, everything about the guitar, there's no problems with the guitar, it plays fine. Um, I might set down the phone and, and let you hear it acoustically for a second here. But, um, but yeah, uh, action was okay straight out of the box. Didn't really have to do a whole lot to this thing. Um, it's got 
the fret ends are, you know, not high dollar. Or they're okay. They're not, you know, cutting me or anything. But it's definitely on the rough side. Need to hit this up with some 60 grit. I'm getting really good results just back and forth with 60 grit. So that you can, like, it's all about the angle, man. Uh, you don't want to get totally flat. But you get really down there, and and it'll get you some pretty rolled stuff going on, and it's real, real nice. And does a little scalloping along the edges too, and rolls the edges. So yeah, don't be afraid. Just go finer grit if you're afraid. <laughs> so yeah, this thing needs a good rolling, and uh, out of the box, it it could use a good rolling, definitely, definitely. Shall I demonstrate? Sure, let's demonstrate. Hold on, let me find some paper. Okay, so, got a bit of uh, 60 grit here. And I only need a little bit. Hold on, let me set this thing down. Just a little bit. You don't want to get too big, because you don't really want to hit anything except for the edges. So, I'm just going to like, hold on a sec, this phone is tricky with a lot of buttons and not many places to hold. Okay, so, yeah, I'm just going to use a little piece like this, and I'm just going to come along here and do this kind of thing. I don't know if I can even do this, I mean, my own light and stuff, but, yeah. Get this in frame. I'm sorry about this. I'm way not prepared in order to do this, but yeah, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna come along and just kind of like this kind of a thing. And you know, maybe to 45, and then down here, 30, 25 degrees, something like that. You'll you'll be able to do it a little bit around around 45 degrees or maybe more you know if you look at like see yeah there you go as you can see they all have more or less the same angle on them these ones here look to be just a little steeper than 45s so yeah start at like whatever angle the fret ends are at and then, you know, kind of round it this way and round it this way a bit, that kind of stuff. And see, as you're going along with your, let me see if I can get some paper in here. As you're going along with your paper, it'll hit both the fretboard and it'll hit up along on both, both edges, both edges, both this edge and this edge of the fret. So, yeah. And you want to like, do it kind of like this with like one or maybe two fingers. How's that for some close-up work? Huh? Obviously you gotta like pull the strings out of the way or whatever first. Easiest thing to do is, you know, just crank these guys about ten times. Everything becomes loose and sloppy. You pull it out of the way, slap some tape on it, and go to town. But anyway, okay, enough about rolling fretboard edges and stuff. You. I've got a video on that, but these days I'm finding that most of the stuff that comes in here, you know, this is about the most that it takes. It's rare that I've got a break pad with, with like a concave round file in order to try to round things off because it's just really sharp, sharp. But I digress. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, so this thing definitely needs some rolling. Uh, moving on down. It originally came with the plastic pins. It's got the plastic nut. Um, looks to be nickel steel on the frets in a standard size, not a jumble or anything. Uh, fretboard's got a slight radius to it, it looks like, so it's probably a 12. <coughs> Might be flat though. No, that's got radius. There's the bridge over radius. Uh, kind of hard to tell with this compensated stuff, but yeah. Okay, so compensated bridge, 
originally came with plastic pins. Um, I hit this up with some uh, mineral oil. Yeah, mineral oil for the fretboard, mineral oil for this. The whole thing's been waxed with uh, Johnson paste wax. And that's the only like finishing stuff that I did this guitar. And other than that, it's all stock. And um, let's see. Other than that, I like I said, it's got it's got decent tone. I mean, for sixty-five bucks, you can't beat this on looks and playability. You know. Okay, so now that takes care of the review. The mods, okay, the mods, I put the pins in, I put the piezo in, and I put the jack in. And I put the strap locks on, tool strap locks, and the matching strap. And that takes care of it for the mods. Then, uh, all right, now, the how-to. So, here's, here's how to do the piezo trick. The deal is, is I had one of those like piezo kits with the preamp and all that, and it comes with a little speaker and a, and a piezo bar, bar piezo, and I had an extra bar piezo left over from fixing something, uh, the Cadence Acoustica. It already had one in it, and, but the unit was bad, so I tossed the unit and got a new unit, but there was already a good piezo in it, so... I had an extra Pisa left over. I left a, I used the OEM Pisa on that build or mod, repair, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, yeah, so Bar Pisa had a, you know, 16th inch mini plug on the end and then uh, just a football jack. You know, I was, I had a bunch of tuners and a bunch of necks and just gonna do a bunch of builds. I had a bunch of extra parts, but I was running low on necks, so I jumped on eBay and bunch ordered a bunch of like I think I ordered like five in each color or something like that. Just to get me through. So with this thing, when this thing came in, basically like I said, I just bought it because it was pretty and cheap. What's going on is I knew I knew that, I saw that, you know, inflation was coming and guitar prices were going up. I was like, man, I should do something about this because either I'm going to, either I'm going to, you know, I can either buy it now or I can buy it next year and, and pay more for the same thing. So, I was like, screw it, we're going to try to beat inflation. And so I jumped online and I found like every good deal I could find on like eBay and Amazon for inexpensive guitars that seemed to be good value. And I'm saying, you know, for $65, this is an awfully pretty guitar for $65. It's, it's a little bit more now, I'm sure because, you know, prices have gone up. I've had this for a few months now. But, um, but yeah, good value, at least in my book. So, so I ended up, I found 11 good deals, only 11, out of all of Amazon and eBay. I only found 11. And actually, I think almost all of them were on eBay. But anyway, um, that's how I ended up with this thing, is because this was part of my beating inflation, buying good values set of purchases. And this was actually the least expensive of all. The most expensive was a little over 200 bucks for like an eight string with a burled poplar top and an oakum body and a three piece neck. And oh, it's wow. That's why I need to do some reviews. Uh, G-Style Guitars on eBay. Check it out. They're insanely nice. They're around 200 bucks, and they're, you know, they're like four or $500 level quality. So, yeah, check it out. They got nice pickups and everything. So, okay, now on to the how-to. So, 
So basically you need two parts in order to do this. This is going to be so simple I'm not even going to demonstrate. You need two parts in order to do this. You need your piezo bar pickup and you need a jack. And I don't know, maybe in an hour ago I jumped on eBay just to price them out because I wanted to, I didn't want to lead anybody astray. So as of the recording of this video, you can get all the parts with free shipping for 10 bucks. Which is not a bad price to electrify an acoustic. And granted, it's not going to be as loud as if you uh, put a full preamp system in this thing, which I've done on a couple of guitars. If you want to see how to do it, I think Phil McKnight does a video on how to do that. I only really do how to on stuff that's not already out there. So I do a video though on channels on YouTube about building guitars, which covers like basically every channel you need to see in order to learn how to do everything. Whether you want to, you know, put in an acoustic thingy and electrify an acoustic or whether you're looking to stain a top or whether you're looking to paint it or clear coat it or if you want to build one of these from scratch well i'm a little bit light on the on the acoustic guitar builders i don't think really i've got a, anybody on the list but if you want to see a master watch ken parker's arch top rig. that's some impressive stuff there but once again, I'm rambling. So here's the deal. So you need these two parts. Right now, you can get them on eBay for like ten bucks. It's uh, like it's like seven bucks for the for the bar piezo, and it's like three bucks for the jack. So all you do is loosen up or take it off, take off the strings. Loosen them up take your pins out, pop strings out, pop your bridge off. Then you're going to need a drill and a drill bit. And my piezo had like a little jack on the end. And so I just cut that off and strip it back. And that gave me two little wires so that I can, you know, hook it up to the jack. And all you do is just wherever the hole needs to be based on where the wire is at the end of the piezo. The piezo is basically a bar that's the same size as this slot. It's like, you know, a couple mil thick kind of a thing. And, uh, and it's got a wire coming off of an end going like up or down or however you want to describe it. It doesn't stick out. It comes down usually. And so you drill a hole down and you just set it down in there and then put the bridge back on top. But you have to sand away X amount in order to account for the piezo to get your action right. How's my action right? We're at 1,000. That's a little high actually. That might be, shoot, that might be 3 mil. I should bring it down some more. Well, I should bring it down some more. It can come way down. It can come uh, right about there is where I'd run it you know, normally. That's probably about a mil and a half. I mean, it can even come lower like that. And that's probably about as low as you want to go. That's about a mil, maybe a mil point two action. But I tend to run mine just a little bit higher. That way. That way you don't have to be quite as delicate and careful when you're playing. I've been playing for 42 years, so, and I run eights. And, um, and so lighter strings are, are better, they, at least, you know, matter of opinion, but but yeah, less effort to press. I mean, it's like, you know, I just barely push on these and they go down. 
and easier for bends and uh, so yeah less grooves in the fingers where's where where are the real fingers they're the real fingers yeah less grooves in the fingers I don't play much anymore it's sad man but you know it's like I'll build one and then I'll play test it that's about the limit of my playing these days I need to get back into recording I did uh, three CDs and five EPs back in the day but, um, yeah, so, yeah, a lighter string's gonna make you, it, it forces you to be more precise, and it makes you a better player. So, yeah, that's, the put, taking off my player's hat, let me put back on my luthier's hat here. Okay, so, pop your strings off, Pop this guy out. Drill your hole for your wire. The hole's got to be no bigger than the slot, obviously, or else it would show. But it's got to be big enough for the wire to go through. That's the reason why I had to cut the jack off of mine. So now you get a wire, and it, and it comes out here. Or if it doesn't, then you solder on it a bit more. Tape it up good. So now, basically, you've got this guy in here. This get some light back on it you got this guy in here and you got this guy sanded down and once you put it all back together it'll, it'll stay in there and so now you got a wire hanging out over here or you're going to have a wire hanging out over here now for this hole what you need to do is you need to figure out how big your jack is and then you know like what I did is I I used a faucet bit, but not everybody has, you know, like a set of faucet bits. <coughs> so if you got faucet bits, good for you, you're, you know, you got tools, man. If you don't have faucet bits, what you want to do is you want to draw a circle that's the size of the hole that you want to end up with. And then just get a regular drill and a small drill bit, you know, like eighth inch, quarter inch, whatever. And just go and, and drill a bunch of holes inside that circle, just inside it. And then come with like a utility knife and you just cut from one to the next. And then boom, your piece of wood, you cut the last one, your piece of wood comes out. And you can dump it out the hole if you don't pull it out this way. And then you just, you know, take your knife or some files and sandpaper, whatever, and you you clean up your hole so that your thing goes in. Remember, the plate's going to cover it, so it can still be rough. It's just got to be big enough for the jack to go through. And then you can set your jack on here and mark off where these two holes go, center punch them with scratch all and go ahead and hit them up with the drill with like, you know, your smallest drill bit. Wax up your screws, slap your screws in, well, not yet, but so, okay, so now you got your hole and all your holes drilled. You got your main hole and, and two or four holes for your plate. So now you get your wire to fall out here, hopefully. <laughs> it's usually not that hard. <coughs> Hold on a sec, I need something to drink. Dry throat, scratchy, allergies suck, what can I say? That is a pretty guitar for $65, gotta say though. Okay, so you got your holes all drilled, you got your wire hanging out, now you're going to get your solder gun and like a piece of wood or something that you can lay over the top of this thing and use it as a soldering surface for, you know, do it on the table next to the guitar if you can or whatever. But yeah, never, never solder directly over a guitar. Always have something that solders and the iron cannot melt through. So just like, you know, padding or cloth is not good enough. You need like a piece of wood or something or else you're going to mess up your guitar because soldering can be messy. 
I took three years of electronic shop, so I know. Not bragging, just saying. Okay, so, so you got your two, you got all your holes taken care of, or, uh, yeah, two or four, whatever, two or four screws, and you got your wire hanging out, and if it's got a jock on the end, you probably cut it back, and you've got a positive and negative, or two colors of whatever color they decide. And from that, that, you're good to go, man, because you got, you know, you got two terminals, you got two wires, that's not hard to figure out. Two and two is four, right? So, yeah, solder that stuff up, slap your jack in, put your screws in, use wax. This is thin stuff, this is usually veneer, unless you got a really, really, really high dollar guitar, in which case it's already going to be electrified. And, uh... And so it, it can crack easy. So you definitely want to go pilot holes and, and wax on your screws. And you put it in and then, you know, as long as, as you like you got something at least like, uh, come here. Jesus Christ. Pardon my French. Yeah, as long as you got something at least like, that big in an amp, this is what a, a GA20, it'll sound okay. Here, let me see what I can do here, hold on. Okay, we're back. I don't really have a stand or anything for this camera. It's not even a camera, it's just the phone. So I don't even have like one of those little things that holds your phone. So, I gotta build something. Here's a plug. Give me a plug. Plug, 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 plug. Yeah, that's working. Yeah, that's working. Here's a pick. Looks like this is going to be a foreign wind video, including a sound demo. Yeah, I was wondering about whether the sound demos were even worth the time. Because uh, YouTube's not exactly CD quality. Alright, let's see. Uh, this thing has not been on a tuner. Sounds okay. wonder what it'll sound like in playback. through a 20, clean, cranked, I do believe it's cranked, are we cranked? Oh no, we're only half volume, oh my god, all right, let's go crank, let's see what we can do, this should be a little bit more touchy and responsive. get is what you get, right? Yeah, only their 
arrangement with their picking style and apparently such is is still the copyright itself. <laughs> As you can see, uh, this is totally in reverse. I was not really expecting to do this. So. Sounds good in the phone. Sounds not bad here. Okay, so anyway, yeah. There's a little sound sample. Um let's see. Anything else to do? No, yeah, I think that's everything. Yeah, ten bucks. Drill a hole. Take your loose up the strings, take the bridge out, drill a hole, pop the keys away. Jack in, get ready to rock, just like that. Oh, speaking of ready to rock, hold on. Just to show you that you can, even with just a jack and a piezo, Chico glaring ale. Okay, yeah, everything's fake, man. That's a little too fake, man. <laughs> All right, let's try again. This is a hollow body. I mean, an acoustic app. Yeah, check out the microphones. I like
so yeah, I think, uh, oh, there's a cool pick if you ever want to try one out. You can like bend it this way and make it stiff. You can do like cool sweeps with it, all kinds of neat stuff. All right, so yeah, I think that's going to do it for this guitar and this video and stuff like this. Probably running along how long. Oh my God, 35 minutes. Yeah, for sure. Well, for four videos and one, I guess that's not bad. Until the next one, everybody, have a good one. Get my B-roll here. It is a pretty guitar. It is a pretty guitar. Like I said, I didn't look up the price, but I picked mine up for around 65, so it'll work. It'll work. That's probably well, that's probably stained actually. Alright, see y'all in the next one.